All right. Great morning. I am so excited to be here with you guys today. Welcome to Breakthrough Mastermind Group. So again, the premise of our group is to help people change who they are, what they are, or where they are in life. And that all comes to the foundations that we build ourselves on. So we've broken this into the eight lifestyle categories. Today's topic is environment. And we have the beautiful presence of Keith Tully, somebody that is very close to me. I am so excited to introduce him and hear his thoughts. I know it's going to be a fantastic talk. Uh, again, a little bit more tight knit. So this is going to be intimate. We're going to get in depth. So definitely share, be prepared to kind of share your experiences and stories. Um, one thing that I, I really like to impress upon when we talk about the environment is the goldfish theory. And the goldfish theory is very simple. It's, it's that you put a goldfish in a small tank and it can only grow to the size of its tank. But when you put a goldfish in a pond or a larger tank, it's going to grow exponentially. And, and that's not an opinion thing. That's, that's a scientific fact. And again, that just shows the importance of the environment that we put ourselves in. Now, obviously, people are a little bit more dynamic than a goldfish, but it really impresses that point. I'd like to share one story with you, and then I'll introduce Keith properly, and, uh, and then we'll dive into all the facts, and we'll, we'll go from there. But I think back to years and years ago, and my mom wanted to, she inherited this iron tub. Have you, are you guys familiar with those? They're the big iron tubs. They've got like the four feet. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so she inherited one of these. And she's always been a very creative, savvy woman. So she decided that she was going to make this a fish pond. So she got to work and she, she repainted it and she put this little fountain in the middle and all these little PVC pipes for the fish. And uh, it, it, was, it was really cool, but we, we were missing one thing. We needed fish for it. So it just so happened that this took place in the summertime. And there was a local fair carnival that, that we always went to. So we, we show up and we start playing these carnival games. And, and sooner rather than later, we ended up winning. It's like three or four goldfish. So we took those goldfish and we put them in the pond. Now, this is in Chesapeake, Maryland. So there were a lot of blue herons and the goldfish depleted very, very quickly. So we had to get a new resource for these goldfish. Now, there was this loop that we would walk around the neighborhood. And on this loop, um, there was an outlet pond. And, and typically, I never paid any attention to it. I never looked at it or anything like that. But in pursuit of the fish, I said, might as well stop by. Again, coincidentally, it was stocked with goldfish. I mean, hundreds of these things, all different colors, all in this pond. So I proceeded to catch them. I would go in there with a net and this pond was about like 50 feet by 30 feet. It wasn't huge or anything. I could go all the way to the deepest point and it would come up to my shoulders. So I did this for about two or three months. Now I came back one day and this was at the very end of the summer. So we wanted to stock up, you know, before it got cold and I was introduced or accosted by animal control. So I had no idea why they were there, but I found out that one of the neighbors had a boa constrictor. Now they had this boa constrictor for about 16 years and it was just shy of five feet when, when they last saw it, it was like four foot, 11 inches or something. And it, it was in this massive tank in their basement. Now their property backed up directly to this pond and they couldn't find the snake. And they just said, well, you know, I probably died whatever. Well, one day a lady was walking her dogs and she called animal control. And what they told me was that she saw an anaconda, <laughs> which of course it wasn't, but she saw this large snake on the side of the pond and uh, called animal control. So animal came, animal control came, they emptied the pond, they took the, the wildlife out and they located the snake. Now at this point in time, when they found the snake, it was seven feet long. So the fascinating part of the story is that although it was in a tank for 16 years, it only grew to about five feet long. In the short three month time spans that it was outside with no ceiling, no cap, 
it grew a two foot and got to seven feet in total. And again, the same is very true with ourselves. When we give ourselves the right opportunities, the right environment, we too will grow exponentially. And that is, that is the moral of the story. So I just wanted to share that with you because that imagery always stuck with me. And, uh, and, and it's just a fun story to share. Now, again, because we're a little bit tight knit, uh, we're gonna be very interactive today, but the premise is very simple. I will we'll give Keith the floor. I know he's got some awesome information to share with us. Upon sharing, uh, if you have any questions or thoughts, go ahead and jot them down or just wait until he finishes. And then we'll go ahead and open it up for Q&A, a little bit of discussion. Um, one thing that uh, I, I do like to address is, is our mission. And our, again, our mission for the breakthrough is to leverage knowledge to impact the lives of others, both personally and professionally. So we're not here to pitch our business. We're really here to bring perspective and information that might help somebody along. Now, without further ado, I wanna introduce Keith. So one thing I'll tell you about Keith is Keith is one of the most selfless people that I've ever met. When I first got into this coaching capacity, he is one of the, the first people that I actually had a conversation with about it. He was such a phenomenal model and resource. And ever since then, we've built a fantastic relationship. We've been able to refer business to each other. We've been able to bring perspectives. And, and he's just a phenomenal resource. He's in several other networking groups that I'm a part of. Uh, and, and every time I, I hop into the Slack group, I see Keith sharing something, whether it's an opportunity or one of his clients has something new. I mean, he's just phenomenal. I can't say enough about him. Uh, I truly feel like we were connected for a reason and, and he's always been there to support me and I equally want to be able to support him. So if you guys haven't met him, which I don't think either of you have, definitely take some time to, to, to get to know him and, and have a conversation with him. You will not be missing anything out. If, if you don't have a conversation, you will be missing out, but you really got to get some time with him. So again, without further ado, Thank you so much for coming and joining us today, Keith. And, uh, and I'm going to give you the floor now. Keegan, thank you for being my morning hype man. That's awesome so much. <laughs> I, I feel better about myself today. So this has all been worth it. Um, thank you so much. Um, the, <laughs> the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, my uh, a little bit about my background. Right? I'm, I'm not a a uh, certified coach or anything like that. I don't, I didn't go that route. I'm not an academic. I, I, I can't, um, I went through West Point and the army and, uh, I, I built some businesses and worked for some businesses and taught some, um, some, uh, corporate America, uh, leadership classes and, and, um, help people go through it up at West Point. Um, so everything, everything I talk about is all about, um, experience not just something that I learned in a book. <laughs> um, so I think, I think in many cases you're, you're, you wonder who you're, who you're talking to. And, and I'm, I'm coming from a place of actual like leadership experience and um, business experience. And I think, um, and life experience. I mean, I'm, I'm 46 years old. I have kids. I'm, I, I live here in um, Queens. Um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of an all about family guy. So there uh, is a lot that kind of filters into the things that I talk about. And, um, and it all comes, you know, because of who I am, it all comes into my coaching, you know? Um, so if you're, if you're, if someone's coaching with me, I'm not coaching them about just their business. I'm trying to ask them things like, why, why do you do this? What, what, what is, get, what gets you up in the morning? Why are you doing what you're doing? And, you know, is this your passion? And we follow, uh, a, a, a lot over into life. So not just business coaching. So I'm just, this is the background that I'm coming from. And I'm basically a self-admitted uh, uh, business and self-help nerd. Um, I love, I love talking about this stuff. It, it, it's kind of uh, a weird thing to be uh, passionate about. And uh, when people talk to me, they, they say, I see you're very passionate about this. And I have to like rein myself in sometimes because um, they, I can tell their eyes are glazing over a little bit and <laughs> they don't always necessarily need all the information all at once. I have to, I have to be a little more social about it. So 
Um, but um, the first thing I also I wanted to do was to all of you not only thank uh, Keegan for allowing me to, to speak today, but thank all of you for being here. Um, I know it's a small group today, um, and uh, but 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning is a busy time usually for anyone, and it's a uh, I think that anyone who shows up to these kinds of things is a basic warrior scholar, right? You've shown that you're humble enough to, to want to learn something, know that you don't know everything, and, and then you're also um, disciplined enough to get up and do, uh, spend this hour to do what you have to do. And uh, sorry, my alarm's going off. So um, I think both uh, having that humbleness and, and that discipline are huge factors, and you should congratulate yourself just for being here. <laughs> Um, so, uh, when Keegan asked me to talk about the living environment, um, it, it really, I started like my mind turning a little bit and, and I thought, uh, it's not when you, when you go and you try to organize your office or you try to organize anything in your life, it's not really about the organization itself that you're, you're trying to gain some efficiency. You're trying to gain some, some sense of, um, the ability to, uh, sort of, organize the chaos around you so that you can, you can do things. And I think that translates into um, being, uh, trying to make the best decisions of your life. Like what the things that you can do that, the, that what you do in these little things translate into everything that you do into, into everything you do in life and, and into bigger things. And um, I, I thought about the environment. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about, uh, how you put your stapler to your right or how you organize your desktop or how you um, uh, get the best chair you can at Staples. Um, those aren't the things that I'm going to talk about. I think your environment begins in your mind. I think you, you, when you are, um, when you think about uh, what you want to do, um, that has li these little um, ripples that, that go off into the world um, and every action that you take also more effectively, like builds the world around you. You are, you are either consciously or unconsciously building the world around you, whatever, whatever, um, things you think and whatever things you are doing. So that's kind of the focus. And the, 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 the first part of that, and I only have two parts, so it's not going to be a very long talk. <laughs> the first part of that is that, um, there's a lot of information coming at us these days. Okay. And uh, between social media, the just news, um, and everything else, we're we're pretty worldwide uh, in our connections and what we're doing. And uh, businesses no, uh, you know, uh, substitute for that. Like businesses is operating at a worldwide um, uh, level, and and our lives are operating at worldwide levels. I have friends all over the world who contact me all the time on Facebook, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just, it's just normal today. Um, so there's a lot of information coming at us. And I think part one of, of getting to the best decisions of your life and making and controlling uh, some part of your environment is to filter that information. And <clears throat> filtering that information doesn't mean necessarily that we are ignoring certain information because, um, you know, uh, I don't know if there are some documentaries out there on Netflix about uh, social media, if you've seen them. Um, but you know, the algorithms in social media force things at you, right? The things that you like, they give you more of, but if you're only seeing that part, then you're only seeing this much because <clears throat> there's, uh, uh, there was a guy who created an experiment and he created a Facebook page and liked and joined groups for things he hated. <laughs> he wanted to see what the difference was in his feed. And he realized that there was a whole world out there that he wasn't getting on his feed. And I think that um, that was an interesting experiment because you, then you realize how much people are actually spoon feeding you information versus you um, getting that sort of neutral and balanced information out there. And uh, one thing I think that um, people 
I think are afraid of is um, using technology as a tool because they get these these influences from other people. But I don't think technology should be um, thrown out. You don't you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? There's there's um, give an example in business, right? Um, I had a uh, client who was uh, building his business. He was very he had a lot of anxiety about what his business was doing monetarily, right? What was happening in his business from a, from a profit perspective. And he was not an accountant and he really couldn't hire an accountant um, to be with him in his business all the time. Uh, it just, his business wasn't big enough to do that. And um, so I suggested a, uh, an Intuit program called Mint. I don't know if you use it, but it basically connects all of your bank accounts and your investments and your everything. And it shows you where you're spending your money on a weekly, monthly basis. And um, this is something that everyone uh, can do today. It's a free uh, program that if even in your life, if you're just, if you're wondering how come I'm always, you know, how come I can't save, you know, um, and, and you want to set goals and things like that, you can use a program like this to sort of organize and, and decipher some of what's important and what's not important and bring it to a way, to a place where it's, where it's usable. And all that information can be, can be sort of filtered out and you figure out um, how to make better decisions because now you have the information that's important in front of you. And that's the similar thing of, of anything, any technology that you use. So if, if you're, uh, if you're doing marketing or you're doing other things, there are plenty of softwares out there. Um, and these things, I think you should not shy away from, and they should become part of your business environment. Okay. In order to, um, and and your life environment, because if you, if you do these things, um, they will, they will help you get that information that you really need and help you just kind of quiet the noise. <laughs> and then, um, so then part two, and I know this is, uh, this is really uh, the 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 main focus of of everything is once you have that information, what do you do with it, right? And the when you're if you make no decision, that's still making the decision, right? You're you're letting things control you. You're letting things happen to you versus you being proactive to do something. Um, and the 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 biggest thing here is. Uh, in my in my practice, I use uh, goals and values. And if you get if you get nothing out of this talk, um, I hope you take away goals and values as being very important, because your goals are the things that are uh, allowing you to keep the end in mind, allow you to start from the beginning, knowing sort of where you're going, like a roadmap. Um, you you can't you can't get anywhere if you don't know what the address is on the other side of where you're, where you're going. You can't you can't get there if you don't know where you're going. Um, and then the values part is more like, what are you willing to do to get there? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be religious. I have, I have a religious background. I'm a Roman Catholic and I, and I use some of that in my life, um, to help me move forward and keep me centered. But the values are not necessarily, um, religious. They are what things make you, uh, uh, what are your limits? Right. Where, what, will, what are you willing to do and what are you not willing to do? Those are your values. And that can be for anything. That can be for your life. That can be for your organization. And the, import, the most important thing in, in life is that your goals and your values are in alignment because that will give you the way to make your decisions. In fact, it'll almost make your decisions made for you <laughs> as you go through life. Because if, you're, if you have a goal, and you know that you need to do X, Y, and Z to get there, you're going to be focused every day on doing X, Y, and Z. That is, that's, that's how the goals work. But the values will, will allow you to know if you're going to, if you're going to be the kind of uh, person who lies to get what they want. Are you going to be the kind of person who um, is always honest? Are you going to be the kind of person who is going to, um, give uh, others a chance and not judge them ahead of 
you know, uh, whatever the whatever you know prejudgment that we all give everybody in seven seconds. Um, <laughs> every 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 one of us goes up in front of somebody, and we're always judging someone in the first seven seconds. Um, these are things, and, and then what do you do with that information? So these are the things how you know those goals and those values are in alignment. Then you can get to where you're going. Now, if your uh, if your values, if you say that your values are to be honest, but in your daily practice, you are constantly lying to your employees. Yep, that check is in the mail. Yep, that um, uh, I sent my guy down there and he hasn't come back yet. Or yep, uh, that's not in my control. That's at the at the higher levels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these maybe some people consider these little white lies and things like that, but they are still not in alignment with the value that you say you are touting, right? They're, they, they're not the value of your culture. Um, and you're building your culture around these goals and values. Um, you're building your world around these, these goals and values. And so if, if, if you're doing something that is not in alignment with your goal or not in alignment with your value, there's only two things you can do. And one is to change your goals or values or change your behavior. So, um, and I think that concept will allow you to make the very best decisions of your life. It's what I base all of my coaching on, honestly. And um, it's, it's, it's simple, but sometimes hard to do. <laughs> um, and, and really that's about it for today. Um, if uh, there's any questions or uh, discussion now, I'd be yeah. happy to field it. Absolutely. So Keith, thank you so much for sharing. I think that I took a couple of notes. There's a, there's a, a few big things that stand out. Uh, I want to harp on the, on the values and, and I, I consolidate this and call these core values. So there's an equation that mm -hmm. I've come up with for core values that I think is very powerful. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. So our core values equal our thoughts. Our thoughts make our decisions. Our decisions create our actions and our actions get us our results. So in essence, if you take out that middle part, our core values are our results, right? And that's exactly what our environment mm -hmm. is. So the fascinating thing is scientifically, right. the average human has actually established their core values by the age of 12. Now, I have a lot of exercises and things on this because I've always been fascinated by this. In other words, and, and this gets into a much deeper analysis, if we go from a psychoanalytical point and we look at what Freud studied, they have, he's got some very extremist thoughts. You know, For example, his number one ideology is that the mother is primarily responsible for the outcome of a child, which I don't necessarily agree with. And modern day science has kind of evolved that basically to say that no, your parents are not 100% directly um, conclusive for what you produce. But the point is, is that oftentimes our, our and, and I've done this with a lot of people, but if you go and you analyze what your mother's values are, and your father's values are, and you write them down, and then you write all of yours down, you can see what you've inherited from your parents. Oftentimes, we take those values yeah. and live them throughout our life as an adult. But the, the, the phenomenal opportunity of being a human is that we've got the power of choice. So at any point in time, you can inherit new core values, adjust or change any past core values. So I absolutely agree with you, though, Keith. I think that the core values are, are a massive component to your environment because you're already predetermining your, your results, right? Like just like you said, if you're, if your piece is honesty or integrity, and then you don't fulfill that in work or personal life, well, everything is going to come crumbling down. You know, you're making a decision, not making a decision is making a decision, right? So I, I, I love that. And one of the big things that you had mentioned prior to that is the awareness, you know, how often do we have established values that we make all of our decisions on, but we never take the time to identify what those are? And, and another thing that you mentioned, you know, you, you, if you don't have the roadmap, you, you're never going to get to your destination. Well, I, I love this Arnold Schwarzenegger quote for this, but he says, you could have the best boat, the best crew, and the best captain in the entire world. But if you don't have a destination, you're just going to float around aimlessly. And the same is true with life. 
You know, it's fascinating yeah. to me if we look at marketing, if we were to go back in time to the 90s, the average person only needed to see a piece of marketing one to three times to know exactly what the company was and they would remember it. When we got into the 2000s, that number went up to roughly seven and now it's almost 21. So that means that we need to see an advertising or a piece almost 20 times just to know that, oh my gosh, this is that company, this is what they do. So it's, it's just fascinating to me. And I, I like the points that you brought up. Uh, it's really, you know, if you, if you take the time and analyze yourself and you become self-aware, then you know how you're operating in your space, which ultimately is a conclusive part to our environment. It is just like you mentioned, what are you feeding your mind? You know, if you get in the car and you decide to listen to, let's just say, for example, let's say you put on a country station. Okay. That's a choice. Now, if you had an hour commute every day, every day, drove an hour for work. If you listen to intellectual knowledge, stuff that would expand your mind, things that you have no knowledge about, you would get the equivalent of a year's college education just from driving your car and listening to the right stuff. You know, that's a choice. And, and that is a conclusive result of our environment. What are you surrounding yourself with? And again, when I, when I started this, it's, it's fascinating to me because I think that this is also a root of role model. You could also have a coach, a mentor. Those are so powerful. The reason being, number one, it saves you time. You can learn everything on your own by trial and error 100%, but it takes so long. Now, the other part of that, number two, is that when you do have this coach or role model, this is exactly you putting who you want to become or people that you want in your circle ahead of you to get you your results. There is actually a scientific, uh, there's scientific evidence that when we pay for a service or product, that we are more inclined to get the results. And I'll tell you exactly why. I actually just researched this and this is fascinating to me. So there's a, there are two different uh, modes or modalities of motivation. So we've got intrinsic and extrinsic motivation modes. Intrinsic is more like our internal, extrinsic is our external. So when we look at the neural component, if we think about the, the phasic mode, the phasic mode would be more geared towards that extrinsic motivation. So essentially this is our response of activity or inactivity based on a specific stimuli. Now those windows are usually very small windows. You know, it might only last for one to seven seconds like Keith said earlier. So if you put the right people in front of you, if you have that role model of that capacity, that is an element of your environment that helps garnish motivation that gets you results. So that was, that, those were just some of the thoughts that I took from what Keith was sharing. So, um, you know, I'd love to hear Marlene, Matt, if, if you guys have any thoughts, comments, stories, feedback, anything else in, in line with that. No. I like the idea that, you know, if, if you're going to be, if you're, how do I, you have to live and walk the talk. Yeah. I like the point you gave, you know, you can't be talking all about how honest and, and then you're being sly on the side because first of all, what goes around comes around. And second of all, you're taking and compromising your actual character, moral values, your thinking. Um, so I like that. I think that is a very powerful point in day-to-day -day life and business as well. And, and in my opinion, um, if you're if you're not uh, doing things in alignment with your values, you're, you're you're kind of being disrespectful to the other person because yes. the you and yourself um, because you're 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 think you're kind of trying to think like you're going to get over one on them or you're you're or they're stupid in some way that they're not going to make the connection that you're BSing them the whole time. Um, it, it's, it's kind of, it, it's, it's icky. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> kind of the, 
<laughs> it's kind of the sleazy used car salesman mentality right. that we used to think about, you know, back in the day. One other thing I wanted to ask, and I know this is a little off of, of what we're talking about today, but for someone like myself, um, how, where do we really go news wise to be better informed because God love them. I have some really good friends, but man, they love the conspiracy side of life. And I really, I have to kind of filter <laughs> what they try to tell me and email me and I'm going, huh, you know, I mean, there are times this one guy I can, I don't even have to open his email. I can see the subject line and go, oh, this is not for me. So where, and I'm not trying to say, oh, tell me, you know, just give me some suggestions of um, maybe some place that I could go online and, and see a different take on news that isn't so, necessarily ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. The, the, the main place that I get a lot of my news from is, is a thing called Newsy, N-E-W-S-Y. Okay. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an app that you can use. And their whole motto is to, is to be informed and not influenced. Um, oh. So they give, you a lot, they give you a lot of facts and not a lot of else. And um, then you can sort of take that and bounce it off of everything else everyone says so that you're, you kind of have an idea. And there, um, one of my friends um, who is uh, an interesting character, to say the least, he, he constantly is, getting, is, is uh, involved in the political drama of the day. Um, but, but one thing he, he talks about, which is kind of in contrast to his you know, action, um, is that you have to s sort of just suspend judgment on things a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're, if we're talking about, uh, not to get political or whatever, but if we're talking about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, right? And there was all these people pushing um, different, and, you know, I'm a, uh, a half Hispanic man, um, and I was giving opinions out there because it annoyed me when people were saying that, um, just because you didn't have a, a, a person of color on your board, then you were necessarily a racist company. Mm. And that, that struck me as a reverse racism. And mm. it, was, it was like, okay, so white people are absolutely racist. Is that what you're saying? And that is, that is contrary to having an open mind and having an open opinion about things where you can you can suspend your judgment for a second and do the research, figure out if these people are actually, you know, doing good things before you call them racist, you know? Um, so this is, that's just one example. I mean, you can do the same thing with um, politics about Trump or politics about Biden or politics about anything. Anything that gets your blood racing is, is <laughs> you, you, you have to take a moment, take a, take a, you know, just take a beat and and do a little research and figure out what's actually happening um as much as you can because the the, the truth of the matter is um uh, when when you get when we get fed information uh we're not there we don't know um there was a right. big thing there's a big thing about uh, afghanistan i was in afghanistan in the beginning 2001 to 2002 and now fast forward and they're talking about how everything has been mishandled and whatever, but they forget that when we went in there, we had no plan. And, uh, there was no, there was no definition of success. It was, let's just go in there and get uh, Osama. And then it was, let's get Saddam. And then it was weapons of mass destruction, which may or may not have ever been there. And like, the, this is, this is how things develop at all times in every story. This is not just, this is not just politics. This is everything that you do. <laughs> and so you get little pieces of these little snippets and they, they, they whiz by you. And, and a lot of people get their information from that, from that title that you were talking about, right? They, 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 they read that title and they go, Oh, 
Biden did something stupid, you know, um, now, now I'm going to go tell all my friends about how stupid he is. It, if you're not processing that information, you're not, then you're not really doing yourself or anyone uh, a service. And um, so if you're, if you're, if, uh, I guess the, the only advice I can give you is to take that beat and um, process what they're telling you. Many times um, I find like there's, there's some kind of um, fear behind people's outrage. There's some kind of, um, I don't know, challenge that they, they themselves have to overcome or there's, or there's some misinformation that they've been given or um, something, but uh, if you can, if you can help, just listen to some of these things, um, and then help them kind of figure out, you know, where. <laughs> not to not to tell them they're wrong all the time necessarily, but you can just help them along with, you know, but what about this, and but what about that, you know, and you might get into some serious um, discussions. But my my friend my friend gets really animated when he talks about uh politics and uh and he, and he was a huge trump um supporter and i was i was although i voted for the guy um i was not and it was and it was uh it was it was up to um it's up to each president and you know and each leader that you put out there to kind of prove themselves over time in my mind and there's no there's no absolute right answer, right? There's, there's, there's so much to consider when you're, when you're in a leadership position of any kind. Um, but if you, if you have a direction, you have a purpose, you have, you, you're, you're, and going back to what are your goals and then what are your values in line with those goals? Um, I think they kind of keep each other in check and, you can you can use that when you're talking with these friends, right? What will you accept? What will you not accept? What is it? Well, I had to tell my friend every article every day. He was sending me something about Trump, how great he was, how wonderful it was, and I had to tell him. I said, "Listen, I, I'm glad you're a supporter. I'm glad you love this stuff, right? Um, I don't necessarily agree with everything that you have. I love you. I think you're a great guy. I think you're a smart guy, but." all the things that you're telling me are only like half the story. And, and, and he would tell me, but, 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 and I said, here's an, you know, and, and, and once or twice I sent him back an article saying, here's, here's part of the other side of the story. Here's part of it. Because even, even my thing that I researched is not the entire story, <laughs> right? There's always something else <laughs> and people don't, don't see all the pieces like everyone's going through something everyone you know everyone has a history something that they're reacting to because of what everyone has a history and you're you're not going to know that off the off the bat so it's sometimes it's tough i mean but take a beat (laughs) <laughs> that's all that's my advice <laughs> thank you i think i i love it i like to suspend judgment thank you <laughs> yeah i want I, i'm just gonna throw something out there and then and then uh and then i'll i'll give the floor back to you guys but uh one thing that is that is fascinating to me is that in the history of news negative information has always sold so i saw this stat the other day that if you were to wake up and just watch the news for five minutes that your day is 73% more likely to be negative. That is crazy to me. Now, if you were to take that news component out of it and just think about that concept, well, the concept is very clear and simple. If you put even five minutes of negative information into your head, the chance of you having a good day has decreased by 73%. So I think the moral is, is that yes, (laughs) It's absolutely, you know, and then a lot of people get in the debate of, well, how do you know what's going on around the world? Well, it it absolutely is important to know what's going on around you for sure. But I also think that I read a book by Jack Donovan and he's, he's quite an extremist. So I don't take this all to heart, but scientifically, the average person can only have 150 to 250 real relationships at one time. 
So oftentimes there are people that they see a event that occurs in, let's just say Japan. And let's say this event occurs in Japan and it may have a slight effect on your life, but probably overall, not so much. But at the bottom, at the bottom line of it all, you don't have this, the actual capacity to change the entire event that's occurring in Japan. So what that means is that when you take away from those 150 to 250 true trust driven built relationships, then you are actually not only disserving those people, but you're disserving that cause that you want to help because you're not very clear on your own vision. Now, again, if, if there are tragic events that occur in the world, absolutely. Why would we not help out? I think about, you know, what happened in Haiti recently and, and all the stuff that's going on in the world. Absolutely. It, it is good to know about that stuff. But the point of it and the point of this foundational speech is to be very clear and concise on your foundation. So it all comes back to that premise of knowing yourself, being self-aware and saying, look, these are my values. This is what I live by. I live by that component of love. So back to that Jack Donovan example, if we are living by that component of love, for instance, we can still love our circle and, and contribute to our culture and share love with people in need, you know, as long as we are still adhering to our own core value. So I, I thought that was fascinating, but really it's, it's also about that perspective. I mean, look, we're adults, we're human. The ma amazing thing about humans is that we have the ability to accept or reject information. You don't have to believe everything that you hear. You take it for what it's worth, but it is important, the information that you surround yourself with and what you're putting yourself in front of. If you put yourself in front of negative all the time, you're probably going to be a negative person. If you put yourself in front of positive, motivational, inspirational thoughts, you're probably going to be a positive person. If you were to wake up every day and just simply listen to five minutes of motivational or inspirational information, your the trajectory of your day would be so much different. Now, we talk about the compound effect in personal development. Well, let's extrapolate that. Why don't you do that every day for a year and see how your life changes? Do it every day for a month and see how your life changes. So uh, I, I just think that, you know, based on what Keith is saying is you're absolutely right. And also, by the way, if you could share that in the chat, I, I wrote down the newsy, but I, was, I wasn't sure if it was S-E-Y or S-Y. If you don't mind just shooting that in the chat, I want to -Y. I check that out. S-Y? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, so that was, that was just my two cents, but I think that the derivative really was Marlene. You had started out by saying, thank you, Keith. You had started out by saying, you know, well, what, what, what do I choose to listen to? Well, it's the whole point of this conversation, right? It's know your values, know what you want, know what your goals are, and then work backwards. Does this fall in line with what I want? And that's why your environment is absolutely critical because for example, you know, I, I use this example all the time, and I mean absolutely no disrespect when I say this, but it's, it's a very clear visual. If I walk into the gym and I, and I want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, well, I'm not going to go up to the guy that's in, in the lobby in the weight room that weighs 800 pounds and he's, he's getting snacks and sodas. It, it, it's not because I devalue either person. It's just because I'm clear on what I want, and if I want this route, I need to surround myself with those types of people in that environment. Just like you guys being here today, you know, wanting to level up, make good connections, develop yourself. That's why you're here, right? Because you're putting yourself in the right environment. This is a prime example of environment. Now, if you didn't do this, the trajectory of your day might be a little different. You know, my hope and intention is that you learn something or gain a new perspective from the conversations on this on this call. So I'll I'll uh, I'll digress. But Matt, I'd, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts or viewpoints on environment. I mean, you always have the backgrounds, right? And that's I love your backgrounds. But that's an example, right? I mean, this is an environment you're surrounding yourself, immersing yourself in in something that people see, and then that portrays an image of you. So so that's again relevant to environment. But I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, stories, anything. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's all a domino effect. And so ultimately, uh, the, the path you go down and how you choose to live your day, it's all um, indirectly and exponentially linked. So, for example, you know, I woke up late today. I'm exhausted as shit. You know, Kenya knows this. You know, we, we talked about that. And so, but ultimately, I was a little behind. And so I had dentists this morning, you know, they got to the root of a problem. And then at some point at the very end, it was a crowning achievement. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes in life you have to, you know, uh, go through your, your proverbial cavities and uh, I'm not going to continue flossing about it and picking at it. So, um, but anyway, um, so ultimately, you know, I agree. I mean, if you're, you know, recovering from drugs, the last person, the last person you want to hang out with is Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones. So <laughs> ultimately, um, you know, you know, you don't sit there and, um, um, you know, hang out with people that are, you know, going to sit there and be a detriment to you. You want to find people of like-mindedness or people we have chemistry with. And so ultimately, you know, you, 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 you are your own GPS, so to speak, without Google or Apple. And yes, other people can help guide you in those certain directions. But ultimately, you know, we, are, we, all, are, or we all are our own Dorothys from The Wizard of Oz. We all have to, have to, we all have to follow, follow our own yellow brick road without own John. So ultimately, you know, that's really what it comes down to is that, you know, which path do you choose? It's like the matrix. Do you take the blue pill or, or the red pill? So, yeah, I I, I co totally agree with you, and I, I echo that. And and I think in a way we should all be thankful that our news is kind of negative because it's only news because it's something out of the ordinary, supposedly. You know, like it's something that's extraordinary, something that that doesn't normally happen. Like that, we should sort of. So, if you think about it that way, all that news that's negative is like this, you know, just this thing that people are going, "Wow, look at that!" But it just, it really just sells newspapers and 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 brings people to the show, um, and and people define themselves through suffering most of the time. You know, they the the, the longest path is, is the hardest path is uh, it leads you to the best. Uh, result um that's not always true <laughs> um and and as you're saying you don't have to do you don't have to follow everyone else you sh you have your own path to follow you shouldn't have to follow everyone else's path right there's a there's a um uh, forget who said it uh, uh, whether it was uh, it might have been bruce lee or something like that um but he said you know the the way to be uh, more um popular positive you know, everything great way to succeed is to be yourself. Like there's no, you don't, you want to find someone and imitate and try to be like them. You have, you can take pieces from, from other people, but you know, ultimately it's your journey. It's your path. It's your choice. So that, you know, in and of itself, if, if you, if you come away with that um, every morning, because I, I spend 10 minutes a day every morning going, reading some sort of, um, uh, either a scripture or something that pertains to business or something and things that help me like broaden my, my view, just 10 minutes. And then I write a little something, um, usually, uh, to certain groups, uh, that are out there, or I post a couple of things I hope are positive out into the world. Um, and, um, that's, that's how I engage the day. And I think if people, uh, would take more time to just kind of, uh, fill their head with gratefulness and goodness and thankfulness and, uh, and that kind of thing. As you start your day, it changes your frame of mind to begin to, to work. Whatever happens to you the rest of the day, whatever comes at you, you, you have a different frame of mind, right? So if you, if you woke up and you're really tired <laughs> and you came to this versus uh, sitting there and complaining about the news, You've made a really positive choice. <laughs> I love that. So I, I just, uh, I want to give anybody a chance to have any last minute thoughts, comments, questions, remarks before we, we wrap up and close out. So 
uh, Keith, Marlene, Matt, do you, do you guys have anything last minute that you'd like to share before we close out? You see, you were worried that we wouldn't make it to uh, 955. <laughs> did great, <laughs> did great. So go ahead, Marlene. I like, the, I, like, I like the idea of the ripple effect. You stated that right in the beginning. I, I even wrote it down and yeah. Keegan and I have had wonderful conversations and these, these sessions every Tuesday about how much everything begins in the mind and absolutely starting your day with gratefulness because we are, we're here, we're alive, we're breathing and we have an ability anytime all day long we never know who we're going to run into and what kind of an effect we can have on them. And by having our mindset right at the very onset of our day is absolutely it. It puts our foot to the path. And some people think they don't have an influence on other people. Like they're, they're walking through life and they're saying, who cares about me? Like we're, nobody, nobody cares if I come to work or I do this or I, I'm nice to someone, I'm not nice to somebody or, or what. Nobody cares. But they really, they really do because whatever you do affects them. Okay. Yeah, I saw an interesting stat, and I don't know the exact number, so don't quote me on this. But it was fascinating. Somebody had done a report, and they said even the average introvert influences a thousand people a year. Whether that's purchasing a product, having a conversation, you know, even even if you're at home and you say something online there is an influence and effect that you have on others. So everybody 100% absolutely does matter. You know, and I, I think this has been an extremely relevant topic as people are seeing a third wave of the pandemic, because if we learned anything about last year, there were over 600,000 people that took their lives just in the US, you know, which is, which is a too high of a number. It ended up being something like 5% of the population, which is crazy if you think about it. So if you, if you take that information, you've got to realize how important you really are. And the fact is people need you. You know, I know that sometimes we go through this negative stuff and we get in these bad head spaces and we allow the, the negativity of the world or, or a situation to bring us down. That all comes back to environment, right? How do you choose to perceive that information? You know, so I, I, I've always, always, always believed this and I will, I will die with this belief. I believe that every single person has a unique set of skills, talents, abilities, experiences that they can leverage to make somebody else's life better. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. That is a fact, you know? It, and, and you can even look in the coaching capacity. I, I have conversations and work with other coaches all the time. Even if we're in the same field, the same demographics, helping the same type of people with the same message, there's still something different about it. And the same is true for everybody on this call. You have something unique inside of you that somebody in this world needs. That's not debatable. That's a fact. So any, go ahead, Keith. Think of something as simple as a smile, right? How contagious a smile is, right? A baby's giggle, right? Just thinking of it makes you kind of smile, right? It's a, it, you affect people, you just do. I mean, holding a door for someone does, is, is not a grand gesture, but it's a gesture. And, and maybe somebody um, who's feeling depressed, you hold that door for them and they walk through and you say, have a nice day. And they go, thank you. You know, like it's, you never know. You just never know. All right, guys, we got to wrap up. So I just want to say thank you everybody for your attendance today. I know we had a little bit more of an intimate group, but excellent conversation and perspective from everybody. Matt, I like how you also uh, threw out some of those, those uh, dentist caveats and, and fun little <laughs> analogies, but uh, it was great to hear from you, Matt. <laughs> Marlene, again, love the questions, thoughts, perspectives. Keith, thank you so much for joining us, all your insight and sharing your stories and knowledge. I, I, I just thank you guys so much. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, this always helps the trajectory of my day to hear other people's thoughts and perspectives and, and, and learn something new and meet people. So I just want to thank you all so much. 
Uh, I want to remind you all that you are loved. I don't know what you're going through right now, but again, somebody needs you in this world. So thank you so much for, for the commitment and discipline just to show up. And if you need anything at all, you can always reach out. But uh, thank you guys so much. And I, I hope you have an incredible day and, and took something from our environment talk today. Thanks, Keegan. Thank you. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.